We're looking at the Cherbourg 44 scenario in the classic folder to talk about combat. Combat is never mandatory. You pick which units you want to attack with and which units you want to attack. So if you left click on a unit, that selects it. Right click on a target unit and that selects that unit to be the target. And you have these choices for the type of attack you want to make. These loss settings will be covered more in the turn phase tutorial but for now you can uh, if minimize limit at ignore losses doesn't make sense to you maybe think of it as a light attack for minimize ignore losses might be considered a heavy attack and limit losses would be attack and attack in between those two levels you also have a limited attack choice not to be confused with limit losses attack. Limited attack means that units that are set to make a limited attack will not advance into the hex if the enemy is vacated from it. Limited attack units also contribute half of their combat capabilities and take about half of the losses that they would in an otherwise non-limited attack. So you have two choices there. The main difference is the limited attack units will not advance into the hex. You also have the option of an attack planner box and the center is the target hex and around it are the six hexes surrounding that target hex. You can assign units right from here to make that attack. And you'll notice some flags to the right of each of these units. That has to do with cooperation levels, which we'll cover in the formations tutorial. In this box, you'll also see some numbers here and over here that have to do with the attack and a statistic down here known as the AR, which is the attack ratio. And uh, I'm to understand that anything under 100 is fairly bad. And the computer is, is telling us right here the probability of success at this point is very poor. So these are some things you can look at to glean a little more information. In this right hand box you have units that are available for support and some you'll notice sometimes will be X'd out. That means they're not actually available. Don't know why they're in the box but at any rate these other units are. You can assign them directly just like you can with these units. Assign them directly and you can tell those assignments by a little gold arrow that's on the unit that's telling you that it's attacking. Time expended you can see up here and that will also be covered in the turn phases video. So you don't have to use that attack planner box if you don't want to. You can assign units directly uh, right off of the map. Uh, you can have these other ship units attack directly if they're within range. If they're not, you'll see that the cursor actually changes. In this case, this unit's out of range, so you have a different cursor. Once they're in range, you see you have that bombardment cursor. So you can assign these units to attack directly. Same with air units, you can assign them to attack directly. And of course artillery units you can also assign to direct attack. Units that are assigned to directly attack will attack with their full combat capabilities. But you also have a second category of units that can attack that can be considered a supporting attack or maybe an indirect attack. These units would attack at a limited capability, usually 50% of their total combat capabilities. So we'll start with uh, some ground units. You can have a ground unit join in an attack by, let me cancel this guy first so I can show you, by assigning him to one of these two reserve statuses, tactical reserve and local reserve. Local reserve usually only comes into play when you're defending, when the other turn is phasing and attacking you. Units assigned to local reserve can actually move to join in that attack. So for example, if you have some units with tanks and you put them one or two X's behind the front line, when your front line is attacked, the units assigned to local reserve 
may move into that hex to assist in the, in, in the attack, in the defense rather. And that's if they pay us a communications check. Tactical reserve can occur in either player's turn. So a unit assigned to tactical reserve could assist in your attack if it's next to it, or it could assist in defense if it's next to it. So in this case, you can see these two units are attacking directly. This unit may only assist if it passes a communications check. And similar to that with artillery units, artillery units can be assigned to local or tactical. They can also be in either defend, entrench, or fortified status. They're also, that means that they're considered to be in tactical support. However, if you dig in an artillery unit, it loses its movement for that turn, so you won't be able to move it. But as an example here, this artillery unit has a range of five. You can see the range for any ranged unit up here in the upper right corner. It says R5, range five. He's within range. Maybe I don't want him to attack directly. I'll hit T on the keyboard. That puts him in tactical. He may assist. He may not if he doesn't pay us a communications check. Same with this unit, put him in T. This unit here with the range of two is not within range to support, but I can move him one hex so he is within range, put him in tactical, and now he may support. So you can see you can get a lot of different artillery units supporting at reduced strength if that's what you want to do. If you want them all to attack directly and have them contribute 100% of their combat capability, then you can do that. Similarly, air units can be assigned direct as we saw. They can also be put on combat support. And you'll see a little S will show up on the right side of those units. Units, uh, Air units that are assigned to combat support may assist, same as the other units, at a reduced capability. Naval units are a little different. They don't have any type of reserve status. If they're within range, they may support. Uh, so you don't have to do anything with them. If you don't want them to support, you have to move them out of range. So in the case of some artillery uh, may not be within range, you can move those units up and assign them to tactical. And if they pass that communications check that we were talking about for everything else, they might contribute. Similar, similarly, we've got a tank unit here. If you don't know what the symbol is, you can look at the unit equipment, see we've got a bunch of tanks. And uh, you can move him up to a hex that's next to the hex that's being attacked, assign him to tactical, and he may assist in the attack also. Grab another ground unit and move it up and assign it to direct or assign it to tactical. It's up to you to decide once you play a scenario, because all of them are different, to see what gets you the best effect for what you're trying to accomplish.